Hey y'all, news has been absolutely crazy lately, and there's just been so much happening around Twitter, Elon Musk, and a lot of reflection on just where capitalism and this concept of wealth has really brought us. And amidst everything that's been happening, a few points of reflections, at least for myself. One, how is somebody able to put in an acquisition of a company as an individual at $44 billion dollars? That's not <laughs> two. How in the world is it possible that nobody, especially on Twitter's board, had any qualms or blocks to what is happening? And as we talk about a lot of abuse that's happening, especially at the hand of a very narcissistic sociopathic leader, a lot of people didn't have this genuine interest for something to survive beyond making money. And then number three, seeing somebody who has so much money, one of the richest people in the world, if not the richest person in the world, how, how can you have somebody that is just an awful human being, absolute poor leadership? And I think it goes back to this concept of attributing so much to wealth beyond the fact that it's just money, but the fact that somehow wealth means somebody smarter, somebody works harder, right? All these different human attributes that are frankly independent of money and that take time to cultivate. We keep projecting these fantasies of our idealized sense of what a good person is onto money because frankly, we just have really idealized perspectives about money, right? quite funny that all of a sudden you have something that's so intangible taking on such a tangible life form but the reality is is nothing can be ever attributed to money and an example is around hard work i often hear somebody who has a ton of money has worked so hard for it but in reality you can't really say that right and let's take for example people in many parts of the world, especially within third world countries or many first world countries due to child labor, inhumane slave labor, imprisonment labor. We have a lot of people putting in tremendous hard work, but have nothing to show for it. They're paid pennies to all of the labor that they're putting in as a part of this larger system of labor extraction and, frankly, capitalism to blame and why a lot of the labor is extracted and going to the top, right? And so I think that's the first point of reflection, which is this concept awareness of capitalism is starting to take form that is beyond just capital within our society. And then the next question is, why do we do this? Why do we attribute human values to capital? And one thing to understand with a lot of compassion is also the fact that this is a part of a larger complex, larger capitalism complex, in the sense that it needs people to have a belief in the system for the system to continue running. And so the minute that we stop believing capitalism, capitalism can't run. We have so many things around us, such as these glossy magazine covers and spreads of fortune to TV shows, such as the entire franchise of Real Housewives and also shows such as Bling Empire that put people with a ton of money in these fantastical, glamorized roles. A lot of the media narratives around wealth and capitalism is meant to make us believe otherwise of money, right? We start thinking, well, if that person was able to do that with money, somehow I could do the same thing with that money. If somebody has that much wealth and they are like this, then if I achieve that much wealth, I will be somehow like them. And so we start creating all of these complexes around money and, of course, in <laughs> deep, deep compassion, not to our own whim, but really a part of this larger narrative that really needs capitalism to survive, to thrive. And I think the really empowering part of it is understanding that capitalism is as much as we put into it, as much as we believe in it. Now, I will underscore, it doesn't mean all of a sudden we can abolish it tomorrow by any means, 
of course not. But a lot of the people who hold tremendous amount of wealth also needed to run so that they can hold tremendous power, privilege, influence, resources within society, right? Money was constructed in a way for us to facilitate a fair exchange between one another that wasn't based on these abstract values of exchanging different goods with one another and we don't understand a, a common language different services, products, or even ideas have with one another. But I think we got to a point where we started creating all of these systems within the complex of money that has nothing to do with the value exchange. And a lot of people attribute it to the industrialization of the finance industry, finance complex, where now people are making money solely off of the fact that money exists and that there was no original exchange of services, goods, and this whole concept of money as a fragment of our imagination, a prompt for us all. What would life be like if we started to detract away from this as a for sure thing and shifted away towards what it is that we wanted it to be? <laughs> and the third kind of pondering that came up as I was thinking about this topic was this thinking of we see what money is doing, we kind of have an idea of why it's started to take form of this human shape. What does it mean for us? And the fascinating thing that I've learned about money over the many decades of just dealing with money is the fact that money simply accentuates who we are. And there's been a lot of instances where I've seen a lot of people who attribute so much to what money's going to do for them. And then years down the line, you just see that they've become accentuated with who they are because of money. Why I think this is the case is a few things. I think first and foremost, because money is this idea, this concept that we've put together our imagination, the unpacking of how money comes to fruition in our lives ends up just being who we are because it came from our imagination within ourselves. So in retrospect, when we make more money, it really becomes an extension of ourselves, our thoughts, our thinking, our imagination. Therefore, it just simply accentuates who we are as a personality. If we were more giving to begin with, as we make more money, we become more giving. And so why a lot of people say philanthropy or giving back really needs to happen as a core fundamental part of just existing within capitalism because let's face it a lot of really wealthy people have yet to donate a large sizable chunk of their salaries i was reading a report where an average amount of donated from wealthy elites had been about one percent meanwhile they make a lot more money in a compounded interest rate <laughs> The other part of some reflection of money is the fact that it is a shared idea. And because it is a shared idea, the way I like to think about it is it's almost as if there is this vein that connects us all, this thread that connects us all. And if we don't have this shared belief and understanding of the concept of capital, currency, money, it just wouldn't work within a society. And so why I think it has so much influence on each and every one of us is because we have elected and some of us are in much more deeper than others. But the fact that we elect into this group communal think box, this complex, we become highly susceptible to it. I, I don't have a solution of where we should go, except for the fact that I think the solution towards money and capitalism is something a little bit more intrinsic. A lot of people have been pushing forth blockchain, cryptocurrencies, decentralized systems as a part of the solution towards it. But really, I think they are just replacing this artifact that we've called money, going back to this intrinsic concept. I think the solution moving forward has to be intrinsic, has to be going back to something that is a lot more interpersonal, in which was the reason why we came up with the concept of money, currency, and capital to begin with. The last point of reflection is really around just how do we deal with this? How do we navigate it? 
And a big part of it has been one, understanding the truth that money has no human qualities to it, that somebody rich is just somebody who has a lot of wealth capital. The second part is the fact that all of this is imagined, that all of this is a part of this larger complex and the shared belief that we have in it. And thus, we have actually more power as a larger community to dismantle this whole paradigm. I think the third part is just this relationship that we have with it. The healthiest way that I can describe is almost putting it on a leash and having it do its thing, but at the end of the day, understanding that it is not us, we are not it, and that it is this thing that we just have to figure out how to navigate. And ultimately, I think we know off little by little in our system, especially as we want to prevent a lot of harm from many communities as well. Just some things that are coming up for me, especially as we start seeing just what a lot of people are capable of now with a lot of wealth within our society and just honestly being able to buy up companies like how crazy is that and so yeah let me know your thoughts <laughs> i'll see you later bye